Welcome to Ion Franchising, where you will learn the A to Z's of franchising. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ion Franchising. I am your host, Lance Gralick. So today we're going to get a little bit creative. So we like to talk to successful franchisees and successful franchisors. Well, today I have a combination of both. This gentleman was an incredibly successful franchisee of this very creative brand. There's a hint for you, very creative and something artistic or artsy. And he started as a franchisee with this brand in 2014. And today he is the CEO and one of the owners of Painting with a Twist. Welcome, Todd Owen. It's great to be with you, Lance. Uh, and I uh, thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity on your platform. My pleasure, Todd. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. So let's go back, uh, way back. Now we can go as far back as you'd like, but uh, why franchising? How did you become a franchisee? Let's talk a little bit about your history, because obviously our show is about everything franchising. So people that are, you know, maybe considering a franchise might want to look inside what you've done and maybe follow your path, perhaps. Sure. So uh, I'll go back to college. I graduated from the University of South Florida, which is in Tampa, um, majored in business management, BA in management, uh, was hired uh, by the largest retailer in the world um, off the campus, spent 30 plus years with them. Uh, the last 15 years been running a very large business for them in excess of a billion dollars in sales annually, uh, roughly 4,000 wow. uh, employees and 120 plus salaried managers. Uh, and it, uh, that experience uh, that, I mean, it's Walmart, of course, Lance. <laughs> I, was just, I was you just, I was just sure going to throw it out there. Must, and... Yeah, well, there's no sense in hiding it, but uh, <laughs> the uh, the opportunity that that uh, company gave me and the learnings over this long career has been just instrumental in my growth and business acumen and being able to uh, bring it you know, two painting with a twist. As far as getting in on the franchise end of it, it's kind of interesting. My other half, who was also with Walmart, retired in 2014, uh, started receiving like uh, business build a basket books started showing up at the house. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no way. No way are we going down this path. But thank goodness her and three girlfriends went to a painting with a twist and that night they came home roughly 10 o'clock and i have never seen four women so excited in all my life so how and, did they, so tell me todd how did they find painting painting with a twist or how did somebody from painting with a twist find them so you know it's a girls night out googling things to do in tampa florida uh great website, went on the website, booked a class for the four of them, uh, instructor-led guided classes. It's a, again, safe space for women to meet is the best way I can describe it. Uh, not the regular bar scene, Lance, where, right. you know, you have all kinds of walks of life, uh, you know, hounding you if you're a woman, potentially, but, uh, <laughs> but we're, we're real safe where you can, you know, gather with friends, have a glass of wine, do something in the DIY space that is absolutely incredible. But what sold me, Lance, on this was the reaction. I have never seen four women so excited about what they just did in painting a 16 by 20 canvas. And they were amazing on painting. So that night, you know, I said, hey, you know, there's something we should you should look at, you know, uh, boredom set in and one thing led to another. We vetted three other paint and sip brands and it was clear what the choice uh, for us was, which was painting with a twist. And uh, the first one officially for us opened in uh, 2015. And then and where was quickly, that? That was in Brandon, Florida, which okay. is in Hillsborough County, right outside of Tampa. Same county as what Tampa is in. And then um, 
we opened up two more studios in short order, uh, one in Winter Haven and another in Pinellas Park, and then purchased one in South Tampa. Uh, quickly after that, uh, probably six months in, I was asked to be on the Franchise Advisory Council, uh, and I uh, immediately fell in love with the franchisees. Uh, so still doing my big boy job and spending lots of nights and off times on Painting with a Twist and with the two founders of Painting with a Twist. And I think probably, probably more than anything, it's helping franchisees uh, become successful from an ad franchise advisory council. And then the eclectic array of personalities that existed through our brand was <laughs> incredible. I mean, it was incredible. All teachers, nurses, lawyers, doctors, yeah. accountants, I mean, you name it, uh, bartenders. I mean, they exist. So it just, but all had that will to succeed, the entrepreneurial spirit. And it was just, I just fell in love with the franchisees yeah, yeah. And, so, and the system. So yeah. Todd, I, we got a lot to kind of unpack in that last segment. So <laughs> sure. what, what was your, so your wife officially retired from Walmart in 2014. So what was her role in your first painting with a twist or second and third as, as you know, you develop more? So um, obviously uh, owner operator. Yeah, she's uh, the I, boss. We know that. Oh, uh, there it's, without question. I mean, that cannot be, uh, it just, you can't be disputed. I mean, she was definitely the boss. I, uh, got intimately involved on the social media marketing end of it. And, uh, you know, obviously managing the finances and things like that, but, uh, you know, came out of the gate on studio one swing. And I be honest with you, Lance, I just wanted it to break even and keep her busy. And then I was like, oh my goodness. We're uh, making money. We're making lots of money and she loves it and I'm loving this and this is exciting. So yeah. Yeah. that's what led, you know, obviously to the fore. And then obviously as you grow it out, Lance, you develop studio managers and you take, you know, artists that you have and develop those skill sets. And uh, we still have six originals with us from 2014. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. You brought you brought up something great that I absolutely love about franchising is that so many people don't that aren't in, in franchising just make assumptions so that anybody that owns a McDonald's franchise had to have kitchen experience or be a cook or whatever it might be. Sure. And there's nothing that's further from the truth just by the example that you gave. You know, you probably have people that have no artistic ability at all that own a painting with a twist. You, these aren't artists. Maybe yeah. there's a few that have some background uh, as an art teacher, but very few, I'm sure, right? You're, you're obviously you're spot on. It's, um, you know, what's amazing too, and what is unique about our franchisees, you know, probably 99% of them were customers, you know, and fell in love with that whole experience that, again, if I could bottle up what those Gina and her three friends had that night in 2014 and that energy and you, the experience that they go through and the fun factor of it and the uniqueness of it all is what uh, you know it's the secret sauce and, and todd for those for those people that are listening that have not been to a painting with a twist you got a couple hundred locations but for the people that haven't been to the to any locations talk a little bit about the experience what what, what's the product? What do you have? Walk, sure. walk us through what happens when you walk in the door until the time you leave. Sure. And uh, it's a great question. So 90% of our transaction lands are done online. So we do a lot of marketing through social, social media, um, you know, Google AdWords, et cetera, et cetera, to reach this customer base. But you literally go onto our website, 
select the studio that is closest to you and then a whole new world opens up. Uh, a calendar of events and paintings. We have over 20,000 paintings in our library wow. for our studios to select from. And so the franchisee, you know, it's, you know, um, I want to get back to the experience. I'm going to, I don't want to jump, but <laughs> so they, they, they go on there and go, wow, I want to paint that. And obviously just about nobody Lance goes alone. So they'll access, access the site, go, I love this painting. They'll call their girlfriends. And we also have date nights for uh, husbands, boyfriends, significant others, et cetera. And uh, so they book the reservation online. Uh, it's all spelled out for them very clearly, you know, come 15 minutes beforehand on wine, have a glass of wine. Uh, tables are set up. Uh, they're typically name plates at each seat. They find their name plate, sit down and in front of them, Lance is a completely blank canvas with a paint palette with the colors that they're going to use to create their um, masterpiece. I love it. In, in the meantime, you have an artist on stage with a, with a headset and a microphone, you know, talking it all up, greeting uh, everybody as they walk in. Um, and then the artist on stage, and we also typically have a floor artist, depending on the size of the class, helping assist and uh, give some technique uh, uh, suggestions if, if needed. But the instructor- people like me that need a lot of suggestions. They're, they're, Lance, let me tell you. The first time I did it uh, was, okay, we're vetting these people. I went and painted a seahorse. And I couldn't believe it because I don't have an artistic bone in my body. And I could not believe when I was done. I'm like, I can't believe I did this. Uh, I took my, my daughter and, of course, Gina, and we went and did it. And I'm, I was like, okay, I'm all in. If I can pull this off, you know, and, and we had a blast. So anyway, awesome. Art, you know, getting back to the artist. So the artist on stage, I mean, they're an entertainer as well as an artist. And it's all about the entertainment that they deliver, you know, to the guests in, in, our, in our studios, Lance, and that culture that we have and the fun factor. And, you know, at breaks, they'll play little games that are, you know, just fun and, uh, you know, give away a gift certificate and those type of things. But I'll tell you, uh, it's, when they're done and they're amazed and they look at their painting and class picture and it's something that they experience it's uh, out of this world yeah and that's something you can't really replace these days having just gone through this awful pandemic that threw everybody for a loop you know people are talking about the future again and you know you you can't eliminate the experience that people still want to have by going out and having a good time, especially with a concept like painting with a twist. But you had your share of challenges as you were in, you know, you were in certain states that you had to be shut down, whether you were a hair salon or painting with a twist. Somehow you were maybe deemed you weren't an essential business somehow. Yeah, I, and obviously that was the case. And it was a very challenging time for our system. I, I do want to credit uh, the last group that ran our brand, did a masterful job at innovating our product line to include virtual classes where you could sign up and we would teach you via Zoom to do a painting. And that's awesome. our supply Our supply chain, which is TD Art Supply, would uh, send them a paint kit with the paint, with the canvas, brush, apron, et cetera. So we would mail them or artists would deliver them to homes or you could come by where allowed to pick up a kit and That's then awesome. you know and uh and it got us through it and they did a really great job with it yeah and you, you help people with uh franchisees with ppp loans i mean you were a franchisee in the in the heart of the pandemic and corporate let, help with that let, let, let me tell you lance again uh, those two things uh i'm very grateful for the last group that came through and that we're running it for those two reasons the innovation that they built and then the way they guided us and at that time it was us because i was a franchisee lance yep. guided us through the ppp process uh and then guided us through the edel 
process if needed. Not every studio obviously needed it, but they did a masterful job at, I mean, sometimes two or three times a week phone calls, guiding franchisees through it, helping them through it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Developing uh, the strategies to uh, help keep that top line going and getting getting studios through it. So, uh, and even, uh, I got to tell you, even in development, they did a nice job too, helping with uh, lease negotiations and engaging landlords on behalf of franchisees who didn't necessarily have the skill set to to do it. So, all those things combined really help this system get through it. So, so I'm hearing from my sources that not only have you recovered, but you've, you know, through the pandemic, you you're you're back to not only pre-pandemic numbers but you've you've started to exceed that yeah i'm uh pretty jazzed about it and we're just getting started you know we're 10 months in with these new strategies new ways of looking at our business and uh for the first six months this year we are crushing average unit volume uh we're up eight percent over 2019 we don't look at 2020 or 2021 Wow. Um, it's a huge growth opportunity. And again, when I, I want to stress, we are just getting started. We have yeah. about 500,000 square feet of retail frontage across the U.S. lands. And we do about 85% uh, of our sales comes after 7 p.m. And we have this these studios that are not being, they're underutilized 9 a.m., to 6 p.m. So yeah. there's a whole new world that we're opening up from a growth standpoint during those hours and innovating in the DIY space. And I am, when I, I need to control my excitement, I mean, <laughs> I am jazzed up about the opportunity that we, that we have. So Todd, when you were a franchisee versus today, because you, you took over as CEO, um, in 2021 um but but from the past to currently have the hours changed at all yet or are the hours of operation still the same so it it's really stayed consistent because obviously our core business lance is paint and sip you know the what i described and painting paint, paint and sip paint and sip so you're painting and you're drinking and uh most of our you know the friday saturday night sunday night thursday night during the week classes the core is, you know, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, that's, that's again, where we do 85% of our business is during those hours. So, and again, cater towards, you know, 90% of our customers are women. Yeah. Uh, and then we do some other things, you know, earlier on Saturday, a lot, a lot of studios run what we call kid classes and we'll do some kids camps in the summer, but we have a, an extremely huge opportunity to grow revenue and raise AUV in a massive way. And yeah. it's already coming to life. And I'm so, ecstatic. So let's talk about your transition from franchisee to CEO. How'd that come about? And uh, obviously, how's it been going? Because uh, not quite a year in that position, but pretty close. So, you know, I was, again, I, you know, our founder, Kathy Dino, uh, gosh, when I, uh, tell you, uh, she is the one that, uh, has kept this entire thing together. Uh, she's done, um, an amazing, amazing job with it before I talk about myself, her, her, uh, I've seen her get choked up about her love for the franchisees, about her, her expectations and the accountability that I feel uh, from her on the way we're gonna conduct business at the home office uh, with our franchisees and the way they're gonna be treated. She is uh, an amazing, amazing founder. Um, but getting back to me, uh, Lance, you know, I was being on the FAC 
in driving some changes through the system, it really gave me the opportunity to get to know and at conferences and meet all these franchisees and build relationships and phone conversations, hundreds of franchisees that I had. And then the other thing was in 2018 when we, myself and Dave, which is one of the co-owners of the brand, launched TD Art Supply. And that company, uh, Lance, saved the average franchisee and supply costs to run classes about, on average, about at that time, about $8,000 a year. Wow. So that also made a lot of deposits, you know, you know, uh, you know, again, you know, on my behalf, you know, which obviously having that trust walking in as a franchisee, as an FAC, as a supplier to their studios, I, I you know, it, it has uniquely positioned me to come out swinging with trust out of the chute. And a lot of times people like me spend months and months and months building trust. So I was able to skip that step. And I hope that makes sense. You know, I really was able to skip that step and and it's it's, been awesome. it's, It's awesome that you have the ability to support and help as a major vendor to the franchisees that's sure. that's that's incredible and and to help with that amount of savings that's tremendous and you, you know there's so many supply chain related issues today and for Absolutely. you not you know you to help franchisees so they don't have to worry about that is fantastic yeah and the other thing you know lance and you know case studies will tell you we we don't make it you have to buy from td art supply there are what our goal is and what we need to deliver on is be the lowest price in the United States on the supplies they need. And if we can deliver on that, they will buy from us as long as yeah. it's great quality and we operate with integrity. And if we're not, here are your other options, yeah. you know, so we're not going to get into that game, you know, of you have to buy from that's no way to run a business Earn the business from the franchisees and others. Yeah. I love it. So tell us a little bit about your process. Now that you're a CEO, you're looking to grow, you already have, what's on my list here, 200, 225 studios or so open? Yeah, so, um, you know, and we're actually, Lance, on track to open up more studios this year than we have the last four, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And what's really exciting about it is we're getting internal growth where we're getting uh, studio owners who are loving what we're doing and reinvesting in the brand. And we haven't had that in quite some time. And I, and I always tell the team, our, our performance will dictate our growth. Our, our ability to give franchisees the ROI that they deserve. And if we're all maniacally focused on delivering those things, it, remarkably takes care of itself and it's it, it, it it's been uh happened a little quicker than i thought and i'm excited because lance the team the franchisees are amazing the team at the home office is just incredible in their willingness to change you know and i'm the type of guy i don't even like being called ceo i i believe i I can't stand it to be honest with you i'm todd i'm like you we're the same we're equal your opinion matters and it's like you know and again i i often tell the team we're going to build a team so strong nobody knows who the boss is and it's it's you know it's one thing you know these people go out there and say those cliches if you if you were to talk to the home office team they would tell you they have a voice their opinion matters. They, they, I, I don't know. The franchisees know. The home office team knows. And if we listen closely enough to the entire segment, we'll get the right answers yeah. for the benefit of the franchisees. Sorry, I'm going off on. I'm very no. passionate about no, this, it. Very look, passionate about it. Todd, this and, is important stuff, and and, yeah. and you're 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 only oozing the information that people really want to get to. You know, why do I want to be part of your brand? Well, obviously, 
your company culture that you're so proud of, you know, people will be able to pick up on that throughout the process. So if somebody, and look, by the way, let me digress for a second. You just said something that's incredibly powerful. As you're growing and growing faster than you've grown in the last four years combined, which is amazing, um, you're, you're obviously having existing franchisees that are growing and adding additional locations. That's one of the most powerful signs of success is that existing franchisees want to do it again and again, just like you did because you had multiple units. That is the number one sign of success. But talk a little bit about the process. So myself as a franchise broker, if a listener wants to talk to you or a member of your team, describe the process. How long does it generally take from the first phone call to becoming a franchisee? And what are the fun little unique steps along the way? Yeah, you know, obviously we want to get back to in-person discovery days, Lance. You know, we've been doing them virtually, but I know if I get potentials in front of my team, the rest will take care of itself. So we're working on that vigorously. But, you know, obviously we have our funnel of potential new franchisees and we get that funnel all the way down and then they go through a four person vetting process with the team and, and uh, the four people that they get to talk to have been with us a combined 40 plus years you know we're a 13 year old brand so you can do the math on uh, how long they've been there so uh, we go through and they interview them and there's a person a personality assessment test you know I know you know Lance there's a slew of them out there and we all do it and the results come back and they all look about the same to me by the way so I'm not sold on some of this stuff but <laughs> But once they, you know, and I'm, you know, look, money is important. And that's our job is to make people money. You have to I protect want, the brand. Yep. And I want people who, who have been to a class who are looking us up because just like me and just like probably 90% of our, our franchisees out there, they fell in love with something. And I know if you're passionate, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you can tell I'm passionate about this. Yes, I know yes. if you're passionate, your chances of success in our brand go through the roof. And it's Z, Z after Z who's, who's like that, just knock it out of the park. But after the four, then I, I get to uh, visit with them at the end, you know, and, yeah. um, and uh, really uh, visit with them, get to know them, you know, what we're doing right here, Lance, that's the conversation that I have with them, to Love be honest it. with you. Yeah. And, and you. And you have some sort of validation stage. Uh, you mentioned Discovery Day. Every brand yeah. has some sort of Discovery Day, meet the team, where you meet the executive team. Obviously, there's this slow progression. Uh, I always tell people, nobody asks for your credit card in the first phone call. Um, there, there, <laughs> We put all 19 of us on a Zoom call, Lance, and we Perfect. go through the we go through the introductions. And uh, you know, I could talk to you the entire length of time about our home office staff and all the amazing Love things it. that they've done for this brand. But uh, yes, yeah, so, so so what's the training like when you become a franchisee? So you know, and again, I, I we're working on getting back to in person training again. Right now, we do it via Zoom. We offer. And it's, it's really awesome, Lance, when I tell you, like, uh, we just completed one last week. We, we uh, have one scheduled every six weeks. And it's five intense days of putting you through soup to nuts, top to bottom. And now it's exciting that, so if you're, so we have a lot of current franchisees, we let them go through it for you can go through it at any time you can put managers through at any time that's why we have it every six weeks we even had a 11 year actually we had three combined they probably 25 years in our brand went back through corporate training last week and where and, is this training held so it's held via zoom and when i tell you okay. my team has this thing dialed in i mean lance it is dialed in and, that's awesome and then obviously we send out the rating surveys and get that feedback. But the 
the ratings on the feedback, I think we put 15 people through it last week and the ratings from it are, they're always, I mean, they're through the roof. And I love it's, it. Uh, it's so awesome. You so I heard you like to empower your franchisees. You really just set them up for success and you give them, give them that freedom. Cause you know, one of the other misconceptions about franchising is that, you know, you're, you're, you got this stranglehold on people. And I always tell people, I said, when you find the right brand, they just want the right people to be trained, to execute the model as it was intended and you run with it. So describe a little bit for me, how you do it and how you empower franchisees. Yeah, I think that's, you know, probably one of the things that uh, maybe we could have done better over the last few years as we really harnessed franchisees from innovating in the space and truly listening to their ideas so we can bring them to life. So literally Lance right now in a studio in Colorado, we've empowered a franchisee to build a splatter room inside the studio. And what a splatter room is you go into this room and, <laughs> and you're and and it's out there in various. Is this a sizes. form of anger management? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, and I, uh, the team was hesitant. I said, she's passionate about it. Her name's AJ. She's an incredible franchisee. I said, listen, one studio out of 225. She wants to do it. Let's see what she can do with it. And we're going to, we're going to build some marketing assets for her and help her out. And let's see. I mean, it's the best example I, I can use hey, when you Todd. talk about innovating. Todd, I'm going I'm to whisper right now an idea that I have based on that. You should rename it Painting with a Splat. There you go. <laughs> at, le at least in that room. <laughs> absolutely. 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 That's awesome. So uh, we talked about COVID. So talk about your leadership style. You're the new CEO since August. You have all this real world big box experience. How is your uh, leadership style? You, you already mentioned some changes, but what do you see going forward? Uh, not only the future of the concept, but, you know, your leadership style within it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, and I covered it a little bit ago. And again, I, for better or worse, I'm completely brainwashed over my 30 plus years at Walmart and seeing and being exposed to some of the best and brightest leaders whether it be military, professional athletes, CEOs of various companies. Again, I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have been exposed to all this. And, and again, it's who you become and who you are as a leader. And listen, uh, obviously I have a big type A personality. Uh, uh, sometimes I have an ego. But when I, when we talk about building a winning team in a team where nobody knows who the boss is, you know, instead of saying, uh, I don't know, he's the vice president of it. I say he runs it, yeah. you know, she runs operations, she runs marketing. We, we want to go, you're the chief development officer. You're the executive leadership team. No, no, no. Because my art department, who intimately have knowledge of what's going on in studios, they have something to offer in every conversation lands. Yeah. So it is, it's one of inclusive, it's one of your opinion matters, but it's not, we're gonna talk about it yeah. for days on end. I, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna come up with an, a, you know, a solution or a decision and we're gonna move fast and not this, Let's have a meeting for the meeting and have another meeting for the meeting. That's not my style. <laughs> my style is let's have a great business decision. Let's include franchisees. Let's pull a team together. Let's have a task force. Let's meet, let's land, let's move. And uh, it's one of empowerment and, uh, you know, in each of the groups, they have a sandbox to play in. And I often tell them, I don't mind if you play outside the sandbox play. We have to explore. It's the only way we can get better. But can but you in... color outside the lines? <laughs> now, I, I, I wanted to ask uh, investment. I didn't ask the square footage and the investment. 
So we have, you know, two, two models, we're one room studio. It can be anywhere from a thousand square feet to 1300 square feet. Uh, our prototype, you know, the ideal is a 2000 square foot, 50 by 40 or 40 by 50, you know, box uh, where you can have a private party room incorporated within um, the space. Gotcha. Um, you know, so. And how about wine? How do you, uh, well, and, and uh, how do you get away with like licensing is different in different places? It is, you know, and it's, and we've gotten through it in the 38 states that we're in and really skinned the cat and figured it out. But most lands, just again, generic, I'll make a generic statement. The easiest way is a beer and wine license. And they're very inexpensive, which enables most of our studios to do, to be able to bring it in uh, to the space and consume it. So with that license, you know, uh, early on we were doing the bottle club license and that created a lot of people having to go in front of county commissioners because it has a bad connotation, find it. You know, yeah, is this yeah. gonna be some other type of club? You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, and there's some couple of states, California, Michigan, there's some tougher things that we have to go through. Yeah. But yeah. So, so speaking of states or territories, what are your hottest areas that you're still looking? I mean, you're looking for franchisees in a lot of places, but if you had a hot list of a few areas, what are they? Yeah. So, um, Kansas City, uh, just absolutely a must. Um, and then there's another dozen highly dense populated areas where we're not in metropolitan areas that fit our demo uh, and we're targeting those areas very aggressively. Uh, we, we, we have work though to do. And, and again, it's from our growth standpoint, it's, you know, put them where they're not. Uh, I have no problem competing against anybody. I don't, we're not gonna impact any of our studios currently. Uh, and I have a rule that no matter what it's, and we have all the data and I, it's completely dissected, uh, no more than 5%. And, and I don't even want to do that right now. And then the other one I'll mention is Memphis. Memphis. Got it. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, are, are you in Nashville? So, uh, no, am I, uh, yes, we are in Nashville. Yep. And in around Nashville, in fact, one of our owners lives in Nashville. And she actually has a couple studios in and around Nashville as well. Nice. Teresa Johnson. Yep. She's yeah. awesome. I've been to Memphis, been to Nashville. So it sounds like uh, yeah. great, great opportunities. Any yes, final sir. words of wisdom? Uh, you know, I mean, look, you, you've, you've told everybody a lot of great stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll continue to have interest. You're already crazy successful. And But any final thoughts for today? Yeah, I, I if you give me an opportunity to talk about some of our home office team, there's Trey Manthe. He's our head of IT. He's built out the best paint and sip platform you've ever seen in your entire life. It's proprietary in nature. It's not an off the shelf system. It integrates with our website. Anything that you could possibly want for paint and sip, numerics, mining of data, knowing the best selling. If you want to know the best selling paintings for Mother's Day, the last five years, you can mine the data in two seconds. But what he has built there is nothing short of incredible. Katie Richard, who's in charge of our operations team, uh, she's been with us for a dozen years. She has personally opened Lance over 100 studios. Wow. So she has been the ops consultant on 100 of our, our openings and has an incredible, incredible team. Brittany Graff, who's the head of our marketing and has an amazing team. The things that they have built and the vendors that we have for our franchisees it is absolutely and they have made this thing and I, I hate to use the word dummy but it's almost dummy proof the way uh we have built this marketing out and when i tell you in two seconds you can have a comprehensive web present marketing present you, where your ads go in cnn Fox News, Us Magazine, <laughs> People Magazine, retargeting, you know, the ads that follow you around, Google AdWords, Facebook, Instagram, with the push of a button, Lance, for our franchisees. It. So, it, and I could go on and on and on and on. Those great are all the reasons you want to franchise and, and yeah. you want to, 
you want to buy or you want to invest in a painting with a twist franchise for sure, based on all that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Todd for Owen, sure. thank you so much for being here, painting with a twist. And uh, until next time. I, I appreciate you having me. Thank you, Lance. My pleasure. Thank you very much for listening today. Please like, follow, and subscribe. This is Lance Gralick. Until next time.